Okay, this one's a good one. It's a reference to Ezekiel chapter 1. If you haven't read Ezekiel chapter 1, you should go back and read it while uh, right after I answer this question. Because somebody asked, in Ezekiel 1, the passage describes several different angels and the glory of God. Are those angels the physical manifestation of God's glory? Meaning, are they really a part of him? Well, I think this Ezekiel 1 question is a specific reference to the four living creatures in Ezekiel 1. And I really like the way that you've worded this question. The truth is, everything that God creates has a little bit of his fingerprint on it. Meaning, God puts some of his nature and some of his character into everything that he creates. Into this earth that we see and the physical world that we live in. But this would also be true of the spiritual world that we cannot see, but Ezekiel is trying to describe for us. And let's just be honest, y'all, Ezekiel descri describes some pretty crazy stuff in chapter 1. How it, why is he using such outlandish language? Well, Ezekiel is trying to describe what something in the physical or in the spiritual world looks like when there is no physical parallel whatsoever. So what words do you use to describe something that nobody has ever seen and there's no parallel in the, the human language to describe it? You use words like Ezekiel 1. Are these four living creatures physical manifestations of God's glory. That's what they're asking. And Bible scholars are slightly divided on this. Many of them believe that they are kind of there to represent humans in God's presence. They have multiple different uh, parts of human and animal form. So they represent God's creation in his presence. Maybe they are manifestations uh, well, I guess you could say because it bears God's fingerprint, there's a little bit of God's glory in those seraphim, those four living creatures that you read about in Ezekiel 1. But are they entirely and only a physical manifestation of God's presence? I don't think so. I think what Ezekiel is doing is the best that he can using human language to describe something no human has ever seen and it doesn't exist in this physical world. It only exists in the, in the spiritual world. And to be honest, I think you'll get an idea of exactly what he was talking about only when you see the seraphim in heaven with your own eyes.